Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So this is the 8th video of the JITGEN series from 0 to ERO. And in this lesson we are going to see the reflect object. So the reflect uh, function inside the JITGEN. So inside JITGEN there is this reflect function, which uh, is an implementation uh, of the GLSL reflect function. So it's the same function that we can find inside GLSL. So what does this function do? It basically takes two vectors as input. So let's say that we have a vector that comes uh, from a certain direction. Now the reflect function takes another vector around which uh, this other vector should be reflected. So do you remember that we said if we don't specify the tail of a vector is always uh, supposed to be at the 0, 0, 0 center? Yeah, so it works like that. It basically refracts a vector that comes like this around another vector that goes from 0, 0, 0 to uh, the, the head of the vector. And then it gives us back, uh, it gives us back another vector that goes, that is reflected uh, around this vector that is usually, uh, it's called the normal because it's usually going to be used to calculate the light at a certain point, uh, at a certain vertex of a shape, so we, it's usually used to calculate the reflected vectors around a normal uh, of a vertex of an object. So if we imagine that this is our light position, uh, we basically can know where the specular highlights are going to go, so we can check if this vector goes in the direction of the camera. Okay, and this is just the normal of the vertex. So it works usually like this. So we need, we need two vectors for this calculation and we get as a result a vector as an output. And the reflected vector is always going to be at the same angle as the incident vector. So this is the incident vector, we call it with i, and this is the reflected vector and the angle between them is going to be the same. Okay, so let's say this is phi, this is going to be the same angle. So it doesn't matter if the normal is like this and uh, the vector incident vector comes like that, then the reflected vector is going to go out with the same angle as the incident vector. This is actually how light really works in the real world. So how the physics define the functioning of light rays. They always get bounced back uh, from at the same angle if the surface on which they bounce back is a perfect mirror. If it's not a perfect mirror, they're going to bounce uh, uh, not so precisely out, but if we go on the microscopic level, uh, the light rays are always going to bounce on this little surface uh, at the same angle to which they come inside. So very well, let's see in practice how we can use this reflect function inside JITGEN. So let's create our usual JIT world. Uh, we got a JITGEN and uh, let's do like this, let's visualize actually those vectors. And in order to do that, we are going to do this. First, let's create a plane that we'll, uh, we'll use as, uh, as kind of a grid to, to see, uh, to have a better understanding of the space. So let's say shape plane, scale 10, and uh, let's rotate it, rotate XY 900. Okay, and uh, let's see, this is our plane, cool. Uh, let's actually position it. Uh, no, position at zero, zero, zero is cool. Uh, let's actually give it poly mode one, one. So we can see actually the grid. Okay, very well. Then uh, let's create the, uh, we got a JIT journey. Let's create a matrix. We just need actually um, three vertices to create these two vectors, right? Because we need a vertex here. We need a vertex uh, here. So our uh, our kind of the vertex that simulates the surface vertex and another vertex that is going to be the head of our reflected vector. So one vertex is going to be the tail of our light vector, one vertex is going to be the surface vertex and another vertex is going to be the head of the reflected vector. Cool. So uh, we need then just three cells. So let's say three, float 32, three cells. Cool. Let's connect this with a bank that comes out from JIT world inside JIT gen and this let's send it inside a GGL mesh. Sorry, I cannot really write with this new keyboard of mine. It takes me a while to type stuff in. 
So draw mode is going to be line strip. And let's say color for the moment here, keep it white. Okay, cool. So let's connect this here. Not here, but here. Okay, cool. So uh, let's do it very simple. We need basically three parameters. One is going to be our vertex. So surface vertex, let's say. Which is going to be at 0, 0, 0 for a moment. Then we need the kind of a light position. So light position, which uh, let's say is going to be at uh, minus 1, 1, 0. Cool. And we don't need an input 2. And then we need uh, a normal vector. So this is going to be the normal vector around we, which uh, we rotate our vertex. Cool. So let's say param normal. This is going to be 0, 1, 0. So a vector that simply from the ground goes up of one unit. So let's now, uh, let's now reflect the light position around the normal. And this is going to be our reflected vector. Now in GLSL, you will connect the normal to the second input and the light on the first one. But uh, uh, in Gen, this is implemented a bit in a different way. So you actually have to connect the normal on the first input. And so this is actually wrong what is written here. Normal specifying reflection. This is actually the actually the, the reflected vector. At least this is what I uh, I discovered uh, just um, experimenting with this object. Seems to be implemented differently, but maybe it's just me that I uh, didn't get it. But uh, I always done it. It actually works. So okay. Now one thing is that this vector for how we got it now. It's going from the center to the light position. So in order to make it go from the light position to the center, we need to subtract the tail from the head in order to get a vector that goes uh, uh, from here to here. So the head in this case is going to be 0, 0, 0. So it's like if we will go vector 0, 0, 0, which is our surface vertex, minus uh, the param light position. So this basically negates our vector, so it makes it go in the other direction. It's like if we if we subtract uh, this vector from zero, we actually just negating the values of this vector, which is exactly uh, what we need in order to make it go in the other direction. So perfect. So let's go. Let's do something really really stupid. Let's use the cell object. Let's switch the x. And let's say simply when this is equal to zero, then send out the light position. When this is equal to one, then send out the vertex. And when this is equal to two, then send out the param, uh, the reflected vector. So we will just do that. We will multiply this by the different. Um, by the different uh, vectors that we got. So multiply this by light pos. So when this is zero, exactly, we have the vector that goes from light position to the center. Let's actually make the light a bit bigger here. So line width three, for example. Oh, not here actually, but here. So line width three. Okay. And then when this is equal to one, we multiply this by our surface vert, which anyway is zero, zero, zero. So it's still uh, at the, still at the vector zero, zero, zero. So the center. And when this is equal to two, we multiply this by the reflected vector. So here, let's see. Cool. And we can see that this is our reflected vector around the normal. Now we just need a way to actually visualize the normal. So, so what we could do is to add a couple of cells to actually visualize the normal. Or we could do this in another JIT gen, but uh, it's, actually, it's actually more uh, practical to just create a couple of cells here. And say, okay, if this is equal to, uh, to cell 3, then actually let's go into the surface vertex. So we go back to our vertex here. And if this is equal to 4, then let's actually go and multiply this by our normal. So we will visualize also our normal vector, which is actually here. There it is. 
Cool. Uh, actually, the normal value must be normalized in order for this operation to work. So let's actually normalize it. So I don't remember if we saw the normalize function yet, but uh, we will see then this in uh, future tutorials. We haven't yet in more details, but basically what it does is that it sets the magnitude of a vector to one. So even if this vector is very long, it's always going to set it to one. So it basically uh, sets the length of this vector to be one, doesn't matter what it was originally, and it just gives us basically the direction of this vector, which is exactly, uh, is exactly what we care about for this function to work. So let's actually colorize the, um, um, the lines differently according to which uh, vector we are representing. So if this is equal to zero, let's for example, color this uh, red. So we're going to multiply this by red. Oh, we actually don't even need another vector. We can just do like this. So when we are the first cell and let's connect this to the color input. Uh, okay, so this should be red, but it clearly isn't. Then let's see if this is uh, one. Let's see again if, if we do like this. Okay, cool. So in this case, it's gonna be red. Then in case this is uh, the two, this is going to be green. Perfect. And in case this is the normal, let's make this uh, some kind of uh, some kind of bluish color. So we have to do this buff for those two vectors. Zack, zack. Okay, perfect. So we colored also our vectors in a different way. So this is going to be our incident vector. So for example, this could be the light position, and this is our incident vector that goes this way, this is our normal, and this is our uh, reflected vector. So let's try actually to modify those values. So let's create a couple of pack objects, pack. Uh, let's modify the normal, for example. And let's, for example, move the normal a bit. And as you can see, as you can see, the vertex is always going to be reflected at the same angle at which the incident vector comes in, which is pretty cool. Uh, we could actually limit all those numbers to be between minus one and one, because actually we don't need more than this to just get the direction of the normal. It doesn't matter if it gets longer than that, we just need the direction. Also, if we move it on the Z axis, you can see that the vector gets reflected uh, in the proper way, so at the same angle and on the same plane, let's say, as the norm, formed by the normal and the incident vector. Okay, so let's try now something different. We saw how this, uh, how the reflect function works, which is pretty cool. Uh, uh, let's actually, now first, we, before we try something different, let's actually try to move the incident light uh, in the incident vector position. So let's call, how did we call it? Uh, light pos we call this supposing that this is like a, a light that comes inside cool so let's try to move the light position ah connect to the wrong place okay. so okay cool suck suck and uh, yeah so if we move the light position as well is always going to reflect the vector in a different, uh, in the proper way. So it doesn't matter if we need the more normal or the light position is always going to work very well. So let's now try something different. Uh, let's get, for example, a GGL model because we can actually reflect everything, also shapes. So let's get a GGL model game uh, normalized one. Let's say file duck dot die our overused duck dot die file and uh, let's say output matrix uh, now matrix output sorry matrix output let's say two and let's give it an initial position of minus one one zero cool and let's actually jump uh, unpack let's get only the vertices and the normals so let's do two jump three and three and let's say offset offset zero and and five, so we are offsetting the matrix that comes inside to get only the vertices and the normals. Let's get a GGL mesh uh, draw mod triangles. 
color 111 line width doesn't matter let's give it touch the lighting enable one cool so this is going to be our shape there it is let's actually rotate it as well so rotate x y uh, um, 0 90 0 uh, actually minus 90 because we want it to phase us cool and these are the normals so let's connect them here very well uh okay so why is this not uh, oh sorry wrong input there we, there we go there we go okay very well we can also give it the smooth shading maybe it's gonna look better okay yeah looks decent cool uh oh let's maybe even connect it to a ggl material actually ggl material game which will make it look a bit better there you go there we go cool now let's reflect uh, this object around uh, a normal also that goes from zero to one let's reflect it around the normal that goes from the center to the simply um, popping up from the plane and going all the way up which is basically this normal that we represented here in blue so let's use a jit gen and we said we want to use the reflect function so reflect this thing around oh this is also kind of cool it's going to completely mess up the object so we want to reflect it around this vector that goes uh from 0 0 0 to 0 1 0 which is basically this vector here this line as we say this is a bit bugged up so we want to uh connect it on the first input and not on the second and as you can see it reflected the shape but actually it reflected it wrong because if you remember before we actually negated these uh, negated these uh, these values so let's do it again by basically subtracting 000, 000 uh, the vector that comes inside uh, from 000 which in the case will work nicely because it reflected the shape on the other side of this vector basically cool so of this line uh cool let's actually mix between the original shape and the reflected one using um, a mix object so we will see uh, them slowly being reflected so like that let's create a param mix value and start with zero cool and uh, let's now create a message here mix pal dollar one And let's mix the reflected. So this is the original shape. Let's now mix it with the reflected one. So, and this is the reflected one. Okay. So in the process, the the object gets also rotated. But okay, <laughs> that's just an application of the reflect function. So if we will rotate the normal, let's actually rotate the. Let's actually create a parameter param normal. 0, 1, 0. let's actually use the same uh, uh, the same vector that we created here so let's actually put it like this let's now reflect it okay you can see that it gets reflected around this vector okay it gets also rotated in the process which i'm not sure is actually um, what we want in most cases but uh, yeah that's just the application of the reflect function so cool i hope this was uh, useful I hope you learned something in the process and I will share this patch on my Patreon and the patch will be publicly available in one week. Thank you very much for following this video and see you soon on the next one. Have a good summer. Ciao.